Let us give thanks to the beneficent and merciful God, the Father of our Lord, God and Savior, Jesus Christ. For he has covered us, helped us, guarded us, accepted us to himself, spared us, supported us, and has brought us to this hour. Let us also ask him, the Lord our God, the Pantocrator, to guard us in all peace this holy day and all the days of our life. O Master Lord, God the Pantocrator, the Father of our Lord, God and Savior, Jesus Christ, we thank you for everything, concerning everything and in everything. For you have covered us, helped us, guarded us, accepted us to yourself, spared us, supported us, and have brought us to this hour. Therefore we ask and entreat your goodness, O lover of mankind, grant us to complete this holy day and all the days of our life in all peace with your fear. All envy, all temptation, all the work of Satan, the counsel of wicked men, and the rising up of enemies, hidden and manifest, take them away from us, and from all your people, and from this your holy place. But those things which are good and profitable do provide for us, for it is you who have given us the authority to tread on serpents and scorpions, and upon all the power of the enemy. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Through the grace, compassion, and love of mankind, of your only begotten Son, our Lord, God, and Savior, Jesus Christ, through whom the glory, the honor, the dominion, and the worship are due unto you, with him and the Holy Spirit, the giver of life, who is of one essence with you, now and at all times, unto the age of all ages. Amen. The prayer of the third hour of this blessed day, we offer to Christ our King and our God, beseeching him to forgive us our sins. From the Psalms of our teacher, David the prophet, may his holy blessings be with us all. Amen. Psalm 46. Clap your hands, all you nations. Shout to God with a voice of exaltation, for the Lord is most high and fearful. He is a great king over all the earth. He has subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He has chosen us for his inheritance, the beauty of Jacob, whom he loved. God has ascended with a shout, and the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to our God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is King of all the earth. Sing praises with understanding. For the Lord reigned over all the nations. God sits upon his holy throne. Rulers of the people have assembled with God of Abraham. For God's mighty ones have been greatly exalted upon the earth. Alleluia. Holy, 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 a reading from the Holy Gospel according to our teacher, St. John. May his blessings be with us all. Amen. When the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, has come, he shall teach you all things, and bring you to remembrance all things that I have said unto you. My peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives do I give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you loved me, you would rejoice because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you, before it comes to pass, that when it comes to pass, you might believe. I will not talk much with you, for the Prince of this world comes and has nothing in me, but that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, so I do. Arise, let us go from here. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away and every branch that bears fruit he prunes, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. Glory be to God forever. Amen. May the sayings of God be fulfilled in peace. Tem os tem o kol bechrestos nem bekyotem agathos nem pi em nev maeth o web Je ak eek so ti emo naina am. Your Holy Spirit, O Lord, whom you sent forth upon your holy disciples and honored apostles in the third hour, do not take away from us, O good one, but renew him within us. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. 
and do not take your Holy Spirit away from me. Dog Sabatri Keoke Agyom Nevmati. O Lord, who sent down your Holy Spirit upon your holy disciples and your honored apostles in the third hour, do not take him away from us, O good one, but we ask you to renew him within us. O Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, the Word, a right and life giving spirit, a spirit of prophecy and chastity, a spirit of holiness, righteousness, and authority. O the Almighty One, for you are the light of our souls. O you who give light to every man that comes into the world, have mercy on us. Kenin kain kestons ni onastoni onun amin. O Theotokos, you are the true vine who bore the cluster of life. We ask you, O full of grace with the apostles, for the salvation of our souls. Blessed is the Lord our God. Blessed is the Lord day by day. He prepares our way, for he is God of our salvation. Amen. O heavenly King, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, who is present in all places and fills all the treasure of good things in the life giver, graciously come and dwell in us and purify us from all defilement, O good one, and save our souls. O just as you were with your disciples, O Savior, and gave them peace, graciously come also and be with us and grant us your peace and save us and deliver our souls. Whenever we stand in your holy sanctuary, we are considered standing in heaven, O Theotokos. You are the gate of heaven. Open for us the gate of mercy. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Carry your life, soul, and Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord bless us, Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of all ages, Amen. The prayer of the sixth hour of this blessed day we offer to Christ our King and our God, beseeching Him to forgive us our sins. From the Psalms of our teacher David the prophet, may His holy blessings be with us all. Amen. Psalm 92 The Lord has reigned. He has clothed Himself with beauty. The Lord has clothed and girded Himself with strength, for He has established the world which shall not be moved. Your throne is prepared from the beginning. You are from everlasting. The rivers have lifted up, O Lord. The rivers have lifted up their voices. The rivers shall lift up their voices from the voices of many waters. The billows of the waves of the sea are wonderful. The Lord is wonderful in the highest. His testimonies are very sure. Holiness is worthy of your house, O Lord. Unto length of days. Alleluia. Holy, 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 a reading from the Holy Gospel according to our teacher, St. Matthew. May his holy blessings be with us all. Amen. And seeing the multitudes, he went up on the mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven." Glory be to God forever. Amen. May the sayings of God be fulfilled in peace. Ten o stem mok obi echerestos nem pekyoten aga. 
thos nam p ap nev ma e tho o web j a k i x o t m o n i n a O you who on the sixth day and in the sixth hour was nailed to the cross for the sin which our father Adam dared to commit in paradise, tear the handwriting of our sins, O Christ our God, and save us. I cried to God, and the Lord heard me. God, hear my prayer, and do not refuse my petition. Be attentive to me, and hear me in the evening, in the morning, and at midday. I say my words, and he hears my voice and delivers my soul in peace. Zok sabe tri ke yo ke agyob nev mati. O Jesus Christ, our God, who was nailed to the cross in the sixth hour and killed sin by the tree, and by your death you made alive the dead man, whom you created with your own hands and had died in sin. Put to death our pains by your healing and life-giving passions, and by the nails with which you were nailed. Rescue our minds from thoughtlessness of the earthly deeds and worldly lusts, to the remembrance of your heavenly commandments according to your compassion. Can inke a inke stosion astonion and amen. Since we have no favor, nor excuse, nor justification because of our many sins, we through you implore to him who was born of you, O Theotokos the Virgin, for abundant and acceptable is your intercession with our Savior. O Holy Mother, do not exclude sinners from your intercession with him whom you bore, for he is merciful and able to save us because he suffered for us to deliver us. Let your compassion speedily reach us, for we are exceedingly humbled. Help us, O God, our Savior, for the glory of your name. O Lord, deliver us and forgive us our sins for the sake of your holy name. Can in ke a in ke stosion astonion and amen. You wrought salvation in the midst of all the earth, O Christ our God, as you stretch your holy hands on the cross. Therefore all nations cry out, saying, Glory be to you, O Lord. We worship your incorruptible person, O good one, asking for the forgiveness of our sins, O Christ our God. For of your will you were pleased to be lifted up onto the cross to deliver those whom you created from the bondage of the enemy. We cry out unto you and give thanks to you, for you have filled all with joy, O Savior. When you came to help the world, Lord, glory be to you. Can in ke a in ke stosi on astonion and amen. You are she who is full of grace, O Theotokos the Virgin. We praise you for through the cross of your son Hades fell down and death was abolished. We were dead, but we are raised and became worthy of eternal life and gained the delight of the first paradise. Therefore, we thankfully glorify the immortal Christ our God. Hint the nebres veia in tetithe oto Corsetho ab marea Ipshoi sari emor Nan bicoe volenten in novi Through the intercessions of the Holy Archangel Michael, the head of the heavenly, O Lord, grant us the forgiveness of our sins. He tenebres veyante bishashven arshi, Angelos nem ni tagma in epora ne yo ne pshoi sariem ot nan bi koe volenten in novi through the prayers of my lords and fathers the apostles and the rest of the disciples O Lord grant us the forgiveness of our sins he teni ev she entered the ore mo sene vange le 
Estes Marcos de Apostolos Epsoi Sariemot Narimbi Koe Volenten and Novi through the prayers of the saints of this day, each one according to their names, O Lord, grant us the forgiveness of our sins, through their prayers Keep the life of our honored and righteous Father of Yosef the Bishop, O Lord. Grant us the forgiveness of our sins, Ten <laughs> Paul, the servant of our Lord Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, appointed to the gospel of God. A reading from the epistle of our teacher Paul to the Ephesians. May his holy blessings be with us all. Amen. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, and that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shud your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, Take the shield of faith with which you were able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak, but that you also may know my affairs and how I am doing. Tychicus, a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, will make all things known to you, whom I have sent to you for this very purpose, that you may know our affairs and that he may comfort your hearts. Peace to the brethren and love with faith, from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all those who love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. The grace of God the Father be with you all. Amen. The Catholic Epistle from the Epistle of our Teacher St. James. May his holy blessings be with us all. Amen. Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Do not speak evil of one another, brethren. He who speaks evil of a brother and judges his brother speaks evil of the law and judges the law. 
But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is only one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who are you to judge another? Come now, you who say, Today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell, and make a profit. Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, If the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or that. But now you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. Do not love the world or the things in the world. The world is passing away and its lust. But he who does the will of God abides forever and ever. Amen. Are A reading from the Acts of our Fathers, the pure Apostles, who were invested with the grace of the Holy Spirit, may their holy blessings be with us all. Amen. And after some days, King Agrippa and Bernice came to Caesarea to greet Festus. When they had been there many days, Festus laid Paul's case before the king, saying, There is a certain man left a prisoner by Felix, about whom the chief priests and the elders of the Jews informed me when I was in Jerusalem, asking for a judgment against him. To them I answered, It is not the custom of the Romans to deliver any man to destruction before the accused meets the accusers face to face and has opportunity to answer for himself concerning the charge against him. Therefore, when they had come together without any delay, the next day I sat on the judgment seat and commanded the man to be brought in. When the accusers stood up, they brought no accusation against him of such things as I supposed, but had some questions against him about their own religion and about a certain Jesus who had died whom Paul affirmed to be alive. And because I was uncertain of such questions, I asked whether he was willing to go to Jerusalem and there be judged concerning these matters. But when Paul appealed to be reserved for the decision of Augustus, I commanded him to be kept till I could send him to Caesar. Then Agrippa and said to Festus, I also would like to hear the man myself. Tomorrow, he said, you shall hear him. So the next day, when Agrippa and Bernice had come with great pomp and had entered the auditorium with the commanders and the prominent men of the city, at Festus's command, Paul was brought in. And Festus said, King Agrippa and all the men who are here present with us, you see this man about whom the whole assembly of the Jews petitioned me, both at Jerusalem and here, crying out, he was not fit to live any longer. But when I found that he had committed nothing deserving of death, and that he himself had appealed to Augustus, I decided to send him. I have nothing certain to write to my Lord concerning him. Therefore, I have brought him out before you, and especially before you, King Agrippa, 
so that after the examination has taken place, I may have something to write. For it seems to me unreasonable to send a prisoner and not to specify the charges against him. Then Agrippa said to Paul, You are permitted to speak for yourself. So Paul stretched out his hand and answered for himself. The word of the Lord shall grow, multiply, be mighty, and be confirmed in the holy church of God. Amen. Today is the 13th day of the blessed month of Baramhat. On this day of the year 36 of the martyrs, which corresponds to 320 AD, the saintly 40 martyrs of Sebasti in Syria were martyred. They were high-ranking officers in a Roman legion under the command of Lysias, who was a heathen. They refused to participate in offering sacrifices to the idols. The commander summoned them, and they confessed their faith in the Lord Christ before him. He threatened to strip them off their military ranks. They replied, saying, It is better for us to lose our military positions than to lose our God, Jesus Christ. He imprisoned them, and they spent all night praying, and the angel of the Lord appeared to strengthen and encourage them to remain steadfast till the end to receive the crowns of martyrdom. Later on, he commanded his men to stone them. However, the stones glanced back upon those who were stoning them. Then he ordered to throw them in a nearby lake, which was icy. Their organs were severed because of the excessive cold. One of them, whose faith was weakened, went out of the icy water and entered the hot water bath house nearby the lake. The heat in the bathhouse melted the ice that was on him However, he still died quickly. One of the guards saw angels descending from heaven and in their hands crowns. They placed them over the heads of the 39 martyrs, but one crown remained in the hand of one of the angels. The grace of God moved the heart of the guard who went down into the lake shouting, I am Christian, I am Christian. He received the crown that was in the hand of the angel and was counted among the martyrs. The ruler ordered to carry their bodies and throw them into the sea. On the third day, the holy martyrs appeared to the bishop of Sebasti in a vision and told him, Go to the sea and take our bodies. He went with the priests, deacons, and the people to the sea and found the bodies. They carried them with great honor and placed them in a special place. Many signs and wonders were manifested from their bodies and their account became well known in all the countries. The blessing of their prayers be with us all, amen. On this day also of the year 264 AD, the Holy Father Pope Dionysius, 14th Patriarch of Alexandria, departed. This father was born in Alexandria in the latter part of the second century. His parents worshipped the stars, and they put emphasis on teaching him all the subjects of that sect. However, he had the true inner readiness to accept the faith. One day, a Christian old woman passed by him, who had with her some pages of a book containing an epistle of the apostle St. Paul, and he bought them from her. When he read these pages, he marveled at what was written. He asked the old woman for the rest of the book. She went and brought him back three more epistles. Having read them, he found the book to be still incomplete. He asked her to search for the rest of the book, and when she felt his strong desire for reading and knowledge, she told him, If you want to acquire the complete book, go to the church and there you can find it for free. He went to the church as the old woman told him. He became a disciple to a deacon called Augustine, read the epistles of our teacher St. Paul, and memorized them. Then he went to St. Demetrius, the twelfth pope, and declared his faith in the Lord Christ before him, and the Pope baptized him. He joined the theological school and excelled in the church subjects, and the Pope granted him the diaconate rank. When Pope Heraclius was enthroned, he ordained him a priest, appointed him as the dean of the theological school, where he persevered in teaching, exhorting, and baptizing those accepted into the faith. When Pope Heraclius departed, they unanimously chose the priest Dionysius. He was consecrated patriarch on the first day of Tuba, 
in the year 246 AD. He shepherded the flock of Christ with the best of care. When Decius incited the persecution against the Christians, he wanted to seize Pope Dionysius, but the Pope escaped. When Decius died, the Pope wrote a compassionate letter to Emperor Gallus, and accordingly the persecution quieted down. Nevertheless, another kind of strife arose before the Pope, which was the struggle against the heretics. He resisted the two heresies, that of Sibelius and Paul of Samosoda. After the Pope had completed his good endeavor, he departed in a good old age. He wrote many spiritual and doctrinal epistles. Most of them still exist till the present time. The blessing of his prayers be with us all. Amen. Today also of the year 92 of the martyrs, which corresponds to 376 A.D., marks the return of the two saints, Emba Macarius the Great and Emba Macarius of Alexandria, from exile on the island of Philae, south of Aswan in Upper Egypt. Emperor Valens the Arian had exiled them to this island. The natives of this island worshipped idols, and they tortured these two saints severely for three years. It came to pass Satan possessed the daughter of the pagan priest of this island and tormented her. St. Macarius the Great came forward and prayed over her, and the Lord healed her by his prayers. Subsequently, the priest and the people of the island believed in the Lord Christ. The saints taught them the facts of the Christian faith and baptized them in the eve of the Feast of Epiphany. They changed the temple on the island to a church, wherein the two saints prayed and administered to them the holy mysteries. When they wished to return, they did not know the way, so the angel of the Lord appeared to them, guided them until they reached Alexandria. From there they went to the wilderness of Shahit. The monks of the wilderness came out to receive them with great joy. The blessing of the prayers of these two saints be with us all, and glory be to our God forever. Amen. Agios 
sasanatosu ekbar seno jennetis eleisolimes agios oseos agios yesheros Agios asanatos ostavrotis dimes eleisonimes. Agios oseos, agios yesheros. Agios asanatos anastasektor nekron ke anelthon yestos oranos. Eleisoni mezlok sebetri keyo ke ageyo pneumati kenin ke aim ke stosi onastoni onun amine getriyes eleisoni mez. Psalm of David Alleluia. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and His strength. Seek His face evermore. His marvelous works which he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. to the Holy Gospel, a reading from the Gospel according to our teacher, St. John the Evangelist. May his blessings be with us. Oh, amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, our Lord God, Savior, and King of us all, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, to whom is the all glory forever and ever. Amen. Therefore, when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself did not baptize, but his disciples. He left Judea and departed again to Galilee, but he needed to go through Samaria. So he came to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, Ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman, for Jews had no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, 
and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as well as his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this well will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water, that I may not thirst, nor come here to draw. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband, and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You have well said, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one whom you now have is not your husband, in that you spoke truly. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet, our fathers worshipped on this mountain, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where you ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews, but the hour is coming and now is, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. And at this point his disciples came, and they marveled that he talked with a woman. Yet no one said, What do you seek, or why are you talking to her? The woman then left her water pot went her way into the city and said to the man, Come, see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came to him. In the meantime, his disciples urged him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat, of which you do not know. Therefore the disciples said to one another, Has anyone brought him anything to eat? Jesus said to him, My food is to do the will of him who sent me, and to finish his work. Do you not say, There are still four months, and then comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, Lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for harvest. And he who weeps receives wages and gathers fruit for eternal life, that both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. For in this the saying is true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you have not labored. Others have labored and you have entered into their labors. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed in him because of the word of the woman who testified. He told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans had come to him, they urged him to stay with them. And he stayed there two days, and many more believed 
because of his own word. Then they said to the woman, Now we believe, not because of what you said, for we ourselves have heard him. And we know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today's sermon about the Samaritan woman, that incident that took place between our Lord and the Samaritan woman, there are so many lessons to be learned from that incident and that conversation that took place between them. So today we're just going to go through a few of them and see how we can perhaps apply them in our lives. The Lord says to the Samaritan woman, You have well said, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one whom you now have is not your husband. In that you spoke truly. Now, looking at this, reading it for the first time, okay, it looks like our Lord is, is telling her um, about her sin and, you know, in hopes that she would perhaps repent about them, repent from them. But do we really notice how he delivered his message to her? Instead of telling her, hey, this is your sin, you've been, you've been with five husbands and you're a sinful woman, notice how he surrounds his message by you have well said in the beginning hasanan kulti and he ends it by in that you spoke truly hada kulti bisudq so he delivers the message in such a very loving way such that he he shows his love here to her and he shows his love here to everyone including the sinners and the fact that if he had just gone away and said you know you've done this and you've done that it, she would have been lost. She could, she could have been repelled. But our Lord was truly shows his love here to everyone, no matter what. Not only this, there's one point here that many of us might miss. But our Lord actually took a lot of things into consideration to get this woman to repent. He even made sure she doesn't get embarrassed in public. Where do I get that from? Immediately before they start the conversation, before our Lord meets the Samaritan woman, the gospel says his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. And then immediately after they are done with the conversation, in the meantime, his disciples urged him saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to, him, to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. So what happened is, before the conversation started, his disciples left to get food, and they only came back after the conversation was over. Our Lord didn't want the woman to get embarrassed by talking about her sins in front of all these people. It just shows how much love God truly has for each and every one of us, no matter what we did. And our Lord here teaches us a very important lesson, and that is how to win people. If he had gone all out rebuking her, she could have been lost. She would have been repelled. And we see this trend of love and wisdom throughout the conversation that took place between the Lord and the Samaritan woman. For example, when she said, Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. Instead of starting a debate over who is right and who is wrong and arguing, oh, this is correct, this is not right, they should have done this, not that, our Lord in all wisdom steered the conversation to aid her in looking for her own salvation, saying, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. He got her to think about herself her own salvation. 
And, and that is just one example. If we look through the whole conversation that we just heard in the gospel, you'll find other instances where the Samaritan woman asks questions which our Lord simply doesn't answer. Now, there's a lesson of wisdom in communication to be learned here. One of the most common ways to start a conflict is for one party to say something which offends the other party. And hence, the other party retaliates. And off they go, and they escalate, escalate to one another, and it ends up being a massive, massive issue. Instead of fighting people's arguments that are irrelevant, it is wise to take a second to think about what we're going to say and to respond wisely to the point and without offending the other party. And what was the end result of all this love that God has showed and all this wisdom and the way he has reached out to the Samaritan woman? What was the end result? He was able to communicate to an entire city. You see, here it says, when the Samaritans had come to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. Then they said to the woman, Now we believe not because of what you said, for we ourselves have heard him, and we know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Through his love and his, his wisdom in, in communicating with this woman, she became a key. First of all, first of all, he, he won her. She came back, repented from her sins. She, she became a preacher about Christ, about Christ to her city. And she became a key to her entire city. And now her entire city, the Samaritans, wanted to stay with the Lord. They wanted him to stay with them. And they believed in him. And they became the first people to call our Lord the Savior of the world. Mukhallas al-Alam. All of that through the love and wisdom displayed in our Lord's approach uh, to the Samaritan woman. Our Lord used a sinner to do this. Not a teacher, not a preacher, but a sinner. And it's not the first time we hear of God using people whom we would not expect to be given such a role. Saul. From being someone who hates Christians, who is actively persecuting them, who held people's robes as they were stoning St. Stephen and killed him, he became St. Paul, a preacher about Christianity all over. David, a king who stood against a massive Goliath, but God chose him. And he defeated Goliath and he became the king of Israel. And God spoke to him, spoke about him as David, who has a heart similar to, to God. It's just amazing how God uses the weak to lead the strong. He uses people we might never expect to, to be his messengers, but he does. So another lesson to be learned here is to never look down to anybody as God works in mysterious ways through everyone. Okay, now what was our Lord's message to the Samaritan woman? What, what, what was the main thing that our Lord wanted to tell her? Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. There are people who want to drink from the water of wealth. Others want to drink from the water of power. Others, positions, lust, fame, and the list goes on. But do you know what all these people have in common? They all will thirst again. Yatash Aidan, as per our word, as per our Lord's words. However, the water which God provides, his word and his Holy Spirit, is the fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. 
Okay, l l let me ask this. Why did the Samaritan woman come to the well in the first place? She wanted to get some water, right? Did she end up getting water from the well after she left? Let's see what the gospel says. The woman then left her water pot, went her way into the city. Wait, hold on. So she came at midday to go get some water from the well. But then when she was done, she left her water pot behind. There's a very strong message here. You cannot start a new life without leaving something behind. Just like the Samaritan woman who left the water pot behind, I need to leave my love of wealth, power, positions, lust, fame, whatever it is, to be able to drink of the water of everlasting life. We all fall in many sins, but we have to learn to leave our sin behind if we want to start anew. For instance, if I will do some service, I'll have to leave my free time behind. If I want to drink from the water of everlasting life, I need to leave something behind. Finally, let's take a step back here and analyze what just happened. God came knocking to the Samaritan woman, and she responded. God looks for sinners to repent, but the question is, will I respond and listen, or will I ignore him? The Samaritan woman responded, and she became a preacher about Christ to the whole city, and the whole city now believed in Christ as the Savior of the world. Zacchaeus responded. He even returned the money back to the poor. Lot's wife did not respond. She looked back on all the things that she loved in the sinful city, and that was her end. In conclusion, what we learned so many lessons today from, from that incident with the Samaritan woman. Uh, we saw how God loves everyone, no matter what. Um, and God displays his love to everyone. And He, in his wisdom, he wins people instead of repelling them. And God teaches us to do the same thing. Instead of rebuking people outright and just pushing them away, there is a certain wisdom in reaching out to people and in, in loving the people around us. We saw that there is water, the normal water, that will make us thirst again. And we saw that there is the water of everlasting life that our Lord tells us about. And we saw that in order to be able to drink of the water of everlasting life, we need to leave something behind, whether it's a sin that's holding me back or a certain love of some earthly matter that is really holding me back. Finally, we, sh we saw how God may come knocking, looking for, because he, he's, he's looking for sinners to repent. And we saw how the Samaritan woman heeded our Lord. The question is, will I heed God's message to me? Glory be to God forever. Amen.
Oh, no.